Welcome to Peter Dupree's second in his series of videos about professional photography, professional photographers, this one dedicated to the ultra-wide-angle lens. Most point-and-shoot cameras don't have very wide-angle lenses, and it's because the little receptor that picks up the image in the back of the camera is so small. The next step up are the amateur-level SLRs, and many people buy the wide-angle lens for them or use the one that comes with it. But while that works very well for many situations, it's not wide enough for a great many situations when it comes to real estate photography. For example, this room. It's a lovely room. It's a very nice shot taken with a 17mm wide-angle lens. Usually an 18 is the widest that normally comes with an SLR. And it's very pleasant if that's all you want to include in the shot. However, with many situations, you actually need to include more of the room, more of the environment, but you still can't get any further back from where you're standing. And this is where the ultra-wide-angle lens comes in, which goes from 10 millimeters up to 20 millimeters, such as this shot right here. However, these ultra-wide-angle lenses are very difficult to control. They're so wide-angle that everything close to you gets extremely big and everything in the distance gets extremely small. The slightest out of adjustment and the distortion is fierce and very uh, off-putting, uh, we can call it that, uh, if not downright unpleasant. So the professional photographer photographs using it very, very carefully but with always an idea towards what he's going to do with the image in Photoshop. You can see this is the original, and this, coming up, is what we did with it. We straightened the parallel lines running on the sides, we corrected the distortions, we made it a much more pleasant shot. In addition to correcting the distortions, we also lightened some of the areas that had gotten quite dark, the shadow areas, like the end of the bed. There are a lot of things like this that photographers do uh, to make the image much more viewable and to make sure that important information is not lost. Now here is another bedroom. This is the 18 millimeter version of it, a typical maximum wide angle with most SLRs, or single lens reflex cameras, digital. When we apply the ultra wide angle lens to it, we get a great deal more information, but we also get a great deal more distortion, which has been removed from this version of it, allowing us to have a more comfortable feel of the room. What we will see when we see the original version that came straight from the camera, is that there's a lot of distortion with the vertical lines, almost an inverted V, which is rather disturbing to see. So what we do is we use Photoshop, a photo manipulation program, to correct for this. It's fairly simple, but it's really necessary in architecture and real estate photography. What you also notice almost immediately is not only do we have the distortion, but we have a very dark be uh, bed and the back area, whilst the area closest to the window is very bright and distracting. So we focus on the chairs, not the room. And this is something that we'll get to in another video. So this is our before shot, before we've corrected the parallax or the distortion visually, and before we've corrected the exposure and the balance of the exposure. And this is our corrected version. Now the same thing holds true with exterior photographs that it does with interior photographs. You'll many times find yourself in a situation where you just can't get far enough away to tell the whole story of the environment and the buildings that you want to include. In this case, it's a courtyard. An 18 millimeter wide angle is being used and it shows a little bit of the buildings on right and left, but mainly all we capture is the far end. So with the ultra-wide angle lens, used uh, at about 10 millimeters, we can get right back and we can include the left and the right and a great deal more foreground, the roof, and some sky. However, just as in the last photograph of the room, 
What we also then include is a great deal of shadow area over on the left, and shadows thrown by the roof and the walls over on the left. This is also a problem since it practically disappears, and we want that information to be able to be seen. So we go back to Photoshop, we make our corrections, as you can see up the distortion of the original shot, and we lighten it up so that we can see all of that information and correct that distracting distortion. But if we were simply to lighten the photograph in order to lighten the shadow areas, we would end up with an overexposed normal area and a blasted out highlight area. So you can't just slide a slider to open up those areas and get them to come up. You have to very carefully use masks and layers and lure the information out of the shadows but without changing the highlights and the other areas that are correctly exposed in the shot. This is what would happen if you simply lightened the entire shot. The highlights are gone, the shadows look nice enough. And this is the example of when it's done properly, keeping the highlights, keeping the correct exposed areas, and yet getting the information nicely balanced between the shadows and the highlights. In this, our final shot, we're dealing with a situation where it's a hotel located right on the water with a lot of sun, beach, water, feeling around it, and that's the emphasis we want. We want to put the emphasis in the foreground, not on the background. This is a 17 mil wide-angle lens, which is pretty wide as wide-angle lenses go, but not enough to capture that foreground that tells the story. So by using the wide-angle lens, the ultra-wide-angle lens at 10 millimeters, we get a lot more in the foreground, more of the tables, the chairs, the umbrellas, and the water while the hotel sits in the background still presiding over the scene, but not the most important part of the shot. And lastly, often when you're photographing a property and a building, something that is not normally there intrudes into the photograph. In this case, it's a bright yellow crane. So professional photographers have the means and ability to remove that object after the shoot in Photoshop making the scene look the way it's supposed to look. So we have with the crane and without the crane.